Hey guys, my name is Simeon Panda. For those of you who are coming back to my channel, thank you very much. And for the new guys, hey, we're gonna learn about nutrition. Uh, some of you will be pleasantly, you'll be pleased to see that I finally found a top. Just kidding. So um, today we are gonna be discussing sodium. Salt, to be specific. Um, the words are inter interchanged all the time, even though they're not the same thing. But we'll explain that, we'll get into that. Um, the reason we're talking about salt is because previously, in my other videos, I've mentioned to you guys that I don't add salt to my food. Um, I also mentioned that I don't add sugar. Now, I don't have sugar in my house at all. I don't even have salt in my house. I don't cook with salt and I don't use sugar in anything. So no sugar in my coffee, in my tea. Uh, that led to a lot of you thinking I don't have it, period. You know, like that's not involved, it's not in my diet, which is, you know, ludicrous because uh, sugar and salt, sodium, can be found in most food items, which we're gonna go through today as well. So um, what this video is about is I, want, I thought, you know, I, I said that I don't have salt in my cooking and as a passing comment, and a lot of you guys were interested, so I thought, let's do a whole video on it, just so you guys are more informed about it, and um, I, I know that I've expressed it to you. And um, again, guys, I will say this, I'm not a nutritionist. However, I do believe that on a basic level, we should all be aware of our nutrition, and uh, we, should, we, we should have a basic level of understanding of what we're putting into our bodies. Which is why, a lot of you will notice, in my nutrition series, I'm not coming to you um, as, a, as a bodybuilder. I'm coming to you just as a regular guy, that um, regular person that wants to know what I'm eating, you know, and wants to go for the best as much as possible, uh, wants to have a balanced, healthy diet, you know? So you'll notice that in my videos that it's not typical of a, of a bodybuilder's view, you know, because I'm not coming as a bodybuilder. I'm coming as just a guy that's health conscious and uh, concerned about what I eat and what I put in my body. So, you know, that's, that's what, um, I thought I'd express to you guys. So today we are talking about salt, and obviously before, to do this video, I had to purchase an abundance of salt. They must've thought I was crazy. So um, I have all the salt that I'm gonna bring out for you guys. It's quite a bit to get through, if I'm honest, and hopefully I can do it in a way that doesn't confuse you, in a way that keeps it as simple as possible. And, um, one thing I will say as well, you guys will have noticed in my nutrition series that I write on the board. And a lot of you have been saying, we can't see the board, Simeon, so there's no point in you writing. I've said it in the comments, but I'll express it in this video. The board isn't for you guys. You guys, I can add digital text to the screen. I'm sure you've already been used to how my videos go. You get lots of information from what I say and then visually on the screen. However, the board is for me to make sure that I've covered all the points that I want to cover. And there's just this whole thing of when I'm writing, I just feel better about it. You know, I feel like I, I know that I've, I've got that point across. So if you see me writing on the board and you can't see it, don't worry about it, it's for me. Ah, difficult one to choose where to start on this. So what I will talk about first is, let's talk about the sensation that salt gives us first and then we'll maybe analyze what salt is actually made of. So let's give that a go. So, um, Salt is one of the five tastes that we can have in our, in our, you know, through our taste receptors. Uh, the others are, so let's get this right, sweet, sour. In fact, here's my board. I'm going to get the board. Okay, so we have one. Let's go with sweet, two, sour, three, salt, four, bitter, and the fifth one is umami, which is like a, like a savory taste. Um, so salt is one of those five tastes. And um, when we add salt to food, it, 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 it gives us that, that sensation and, and it just enhances flavors, which is why salt's added to a, an abundance of food. Now, um, in regards to me not adding it to food, there's a reason for that. Most food already has a certain amount of sodium in it, you know? Um, and for me, I, I would rather just have the naturally occurring sodium or the sodium that is added by manufacturers which, in abundance than add more salt to that. Um, so let's get this uh, clear. Table salt, which is refined salt, is 99% sodium chloride. Um, we have different options of different salts. So we have sea salt, uh, we have Himalayan salt, and we're gonna discuss all of them. Um, if we start, for example, with sea salt. 
Sea salt is in the name. So sea salt comes from, I'm gonna butcher this, but it's basically evaporating sea seawater and we get the, you know, we get the salt left and it still has some minerals left with it, which is why it has a different flavor and uh, the crystals are, uh, are larger than, than refined salt. Refined salt is in the name, it's refined, you know, so it's just pure, almost pure uh, sodium chloride. Uh, Himalayan salt, um, the name is actually a little misleading. Um, it's not necessarily from the Himalayas. It's uh, from a mine that is very close to the Himalayas. It's about 190 miles away from the Himalayas. And um, it's rock salt, you know, and uh, that's why it's ground into large crystals and it's unrefined. So it has uh, trace elements and it's because of those trace elements that Himalayan salt has this big um, spotlight on it at the moment, you know, plus the color. Everything, we're visual people, we love, seeing you know color you know like uh, refined salt isn't going to be of interest to anyone because there's nothing special about it but pink salt just the color alone attracts interest and then there's all the health claims with himalayan salt um they 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 range from like there's there's a huge amount of claims with, with himalayan salt but the reality is that himalayan salt is 98 percent sodium chloride so it's very similar to refined salt and the health benefits are all in those trace elements. So if you look at it, how significant are those trace elements gonna be when they only make up, let's say, one or 2% of every granule of, of salt? You know, so, um, but, but, but the pink salt obviously has its image because of uh, marketing, you know? So it's pretty much all marketing. Um, some people do say it tastes better. You know, that's uh, up to the individual. Uh, we then have 50% um, less sodium salt. So in terms of sodium in salt, I think the sodium content of salt, because that, that's where we have to, you know, get things correct. Because when we're talking about salt, are we talking about sodium? No, not necessarily, because sodium makes up about 40% of salt. Have I confused you yet? <laughs> you know, so if we look at, let's take this for example. This is, uh, this says that one serving of salt, which is 1.5 grams, has 590 grams of sodium. You see what I mean? So this is salt, but it has a certain amount of sodium. And when we're talking about sodium, that is where, you know, um, the, 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 the concern is because we don't want to have excess sodium in our diet because of the health implications. Now, there are plenty of studies that have shown that high sodium uh, intake can increase your blood pressure. You know, and that's the thing that we're like we, we, we want to avoid, which is why I personally don't add extra salt. I'm getting enough salt in my diet from all sorts of foods, and I'm going to go over just some, just a few things to to explain. Okay, so um, what do we have? What do we have? Okay, here's some cheese, some baby bell cheese, and the sodium content for that cheese is 160 milligrams. Now, before I continue to show you. Um, the amount of sodium in all of these food items, the daily recommended allowance for salt is no more than 2.3 grams. Now, the body can survive on 186 milligrams of salt. That's, that's all it needs. But we're not, you know, there's, it's physically impossible to, to get that small amount of so uh, sodium in your diet. So they recommend about 1.5 uh, to 2.3 grams of sodium in your diet. You know, so yeah, but then, like I said, I don't need to add it because most foods have it already. If I take this uh, almond milk, for example, in this almond milk, there is 150 milligrams per serving. The cheese, I just told you, had, what was it? Um, 160 milligrams there. If we go to uh, things like, uh, even this tuna. Now, this tuna, the, 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 the salt, sorry, salt, sodium, so hard, like, in Europe, let me just quickly touch on this. In Europe, most packaging will label the salt content. Whereas in the US, it's more sodium that you see on the packaging. I think they're trying to come to some general consensus about labeling so that worldwide, you're able to determine whether you're having you know, salt or sodium. That, that, so that it's just across the board, one, one, one determining factor. But at the moment, the US has sodium and the UK pretty much goes down and the whole of the EU pretty much goes down the line of having salt content. And uh, again, like I said to you guys, sodium makes up about 40% of salt. So you then have to do your own equations, which is quite confusing, you know? But I think if, I'm, if we're gonna go with the EU um, amount, it's about 
no more than six grams. So like for, for, for just to be within a healthy balance, it's no more than six grams of salt. Okay, so yes, as I was saying, this tuna has um, 200 milligrams per serving. You know, so there's salt in everything. Almost every food item, there is salt, you know. Um, I, I did talk to you guys about nuts, didn't I? And I said to you guys that it's the best to avoid getting salted nuts. Reason being is because that's really gonna increase your sodium without you even knowing, you know, like that's like, the, the sodium content in those um, salted nuts is very high, you know? So, um, and just, just to give you an example about why you should read labels all the time is I have two different nut butters here by the same company, um, although one is organic, but my main point is this here is almond butter and it is, if, I, if you read the ingredients, now guys, I think I've already told you about ingredients. When you read an ingredient, the first item on the ingredients list is in the highest amount of the product. So here we have dry roasted almonds, first and only ingredient in this uh, tub of almond butter. And the sodium content, because of that, is of course zero. Then we have um, peanut butter spread here. And it actually says right on the front that this contains 90% peanuts. So we already know that this isn't 100% peanut butter. Um, we then have, so we've got organic peanuts, we have organic palm oil, organic cane sugar, and sea salt and we have 100 milligrams of uh, sodium. So, you know, um, me telling you that isn't telling you that this is bad and this is good. I'm just saying you need to be aware of, you know, what you're consuming, you know? Me personally, like I said to you guys, I don't add it because I just feel like, firstly, I enjoy foods for what they are. You know, um, I, don't, I don't feel I need to add salt to, to enhance the flavor. I like to taste the actual flavors of the food. And secondly, I, I, I do want to watch my sodium intake to make sure that it's, um, not too high, you know, and I feel like I can get enough. And you guys have to also consider, um, although I did stop eat, um, stop adding salt years back, so when I still lived in the UK, over here it's even more important because the food in the US has very high salt content. Anyone will tell you that, very high. So um, obviously that can't be avoided when I eat out. So when we eat out, you know, I'm not necessarily telling the cook, can you not put any salt in my food? However, there has been times where We've had meals that haven't had um, extra salt added and they've still been inedible because of the amount of salt that was in them. You know, um, probably inedible for us coming from the UK plus coming from not cooking with salt and would probably be edible for regular for everyone else. But for us, some foods were just inedible. So um, when we eat out, of course, we're getting our salt consumption. So. It's, it's just something I wanted to get through to you guys, you know, because the question was asked, and if you don't know, you don't know, you know. So, so what I'm telling you guys is, it's not that I avoid salt, sodium, it's that I do not add it, so, you know. So these would not be in my house, if not for this video. So um, if I don't open them, I'm pretty much going to take them back. <laughs> but I'll tell you what, I, I do what, what I did want to do, and I'm going to have to sacrifice and open it, is I wanted to show you the difference in the granules. Uh, one thing that is said about the Himalayan salt is people consume a lot less because the granules are larger, which means you put less, you know, rather than the, the, the refined um, variety, which you'll probably cover your food in. Um, before I show you the granules and the differences in the colors and the size, etc., uh, I did want to just let you guys know the reason why we need salt in the first place, because our bodies do need salt. You know, that's a given. That's something that our bodies need to, you know, be in homeostasis. Uh, and the um, main thing is that salt is an electrolyte. And these electrolytes are important in our body because they are used for our impulses, they are used for balancing our pH levels, uh, the contractions in our muscles. So it's, it's, it's an essential mineral that we need in our diet. So you really, like, there haven't been any cases where people have been necessarily sodium deficient, so that's nothing to worry about. But obviously there is the, the worry of excess sodium, you know? So um, yeah, that's, that's pretty much the reason why um, I don't have excess and I do obviously need it in my diet just like we all do and it's found in all foods. So, you know, something to consider. Okay, so um, this is gonna be very interesting for me because um, like I said, 
I don't buy salt, so this is all new. I don't have this in my house, but it's more for you guys to see um, a difference because you know maybe you've tried regular refined table salt, but you've not tried Himalayan salt and you didn't know the difference. So hopefully in the video I've managed to convey the difference with them. You know, so now you know that Himalayan salt is 98 percent sodium chloride, regular salt is 99 percent, and uh, you now know that there's trace minerals in Himalayan salt that regular salt doesn't have. Uh, if I haven't said, I'll say again uh, that the uh, Himalayan salt has 84 minerals, trace elements that are not, um, the, that do not occur in regular table salt. Uh, but like I said, the amount is so minuscule, it's almost not not worth it, especially as uh, Himalayan salt is a lot more expensive. But what I wanted to do is just to show you the granules. So what I will do is you can see here actually, the rock salt there you go you can see that and uh, with like you know containers like this you, you, you basically just like your black pepper you ground it up and I'm sure that that adds some sort of texture and uh, different sensation in flavor to the food um, we also have this is a ground version which um, obviously I could do with that so I'm not going to show you that but I do want to show you sea salt and sea salt again is larger granules you know and I don't know if you've ever, if you've ever, if you've ever had a steak with uh, you know sea salt it, it does taste good it really does taste good and there's a different sensation from having um, regular refined salt added you know but uh, again that's not something I would request <laughs> to be honest if I could if I remember I would actually tell a chef oh could you hold on the uh, salt on my steak you know because uh like i like to taste the steak for what it is you know and i uh, don't want the, the salt added but yeah no um that's pretty much it like i said guys i'm just coming to you from a basic understanding of nutrition and that's all you pretty much need uh to get about your daily life and to make better health choices you know um there's plenty more on sodium that um i could go through and you could go through so do your research i'll try and make sure that hopefully i I'm going to put as much information in this video about sodium so that you can take that home but you should from what I've already said get why I don't have to add any extra you know and that's what I wanted to do I just wanted to explain that 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 little part of my previous videos where I said I don't add salt which confused a lot of you this should give you an example of why um, yeah I've, I've already got a, plenty of videos in the pipeline based on your recommendations so they're coming. Um, so I'm even thinking, do I need to ask you guys what to record? You, I've pretty much got a list as long as my arm of stuff that I'm gonna go through. So uh, just keep watching and I appreciate you guys. Subscribe, tell your friends and uh, peace out.